Hello, bookish enthusiasts, and get ready to be transported to different worlds, one page at a time. Today, we unlock the doors to Yellow, faced by Rebecca F. Kwong. Remember, liking and following me on YouTube not only shows your support, but also helps others discover my content. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe follow button, and let's grow this community together. In Chapter 1, June and her college friend Athena Liu are celebrating. Athena just got a TV deal with Netflix 1. To June, Athena has everything 1. She has earned prestigious degrees and published several novels. However, although Athena is young and ambitious, she has almost no friends. 1. June once thought Athena was simply aloof. 2. Now she wonders if others hate her. 2. June and Athena became friends at Yale. They lived in the same building and both enjoyed writing. Although June published a novel too, Over the Sycamore was not a great success. She is often jealous that Athena is an ambiguously queer woman of color everyone wants to publish six. She is talented, but her fame seems more about her identity than her work. Sometimes, June hates that she is just a brown-eyed, brown-haired white girl from Philadelphia too. June guesses she and Athena have only remained friends because it's so convenient. 2. Over drinks. Athena talks about working with Netflix. June tries to hide her jealousy. Once Athena is thoroughly drunk, they leave for Athena's DuPont Circle apartment. June is curious to see inside. It is an expensive and impressive space. June spies on Athena's writing space, resenting her typewriter and private writing process. Athena reveals that she just finished a project and wants June to read it. June scans the first pages. They are impressive. She tells Athena she cannot read while drunk 15. The friends drink and talk for hours. Their connection feels the easiest it has since college. June wonders if they could really be friends. Then while eating pancakes, Athena starts choking. Unable to give her proper Heimlich, June calls 911. Before the ambulance arrives, Athena is dead. While talking to the EMBs, June fears they will arrest her for murder. 20. Back home in Rosslyn, June throws her bag with Athena's manuscript onto the floor. 20. In Chapter 2, June has trouble mourning Athena. They were not that close. At first, she feels nothing. Then, she panics when she realizes she is the reason why Athena died 24. Her sister Rory assures her otherwise. June attends Athena's funeral. She has a brief exchange with Athena's mother. For the next few weeks, June barely leaves her apartment 27. She spends most of her time reading The Last Front, Athena's Masterpiece, 27. It is about the unsung contributions and experiences of the Chinese Labor Corps during World War I-27. While June is awed by Athena's writing and styling, the draft is barely complete. June starts typing it up as a writing exercise. Soon, she finds herself tidying, trimming, decorating, and adding... 29. Once she is done, she sends the draft to her agent, Brett. She has owed him pages for some time. A few days later, he responds with a positive message. Three weeks later, they are shopping out the manuscript. They settle with Eden Press, a mid-sized indie publisher that has a reputation for cranking out award, winning prestige fiction, 34. June has finally made it, 35. In Chapter 3, while some might call June a thief, plagiarizer, and racist, June rewrote most of the book, 36. She finished what Athena had started. She is helping Athena had started. She is helping Athena as much as herself. For the first time in months, she is excited to write, too. She owes nothing to the dead. 
especially when the dead are thieves and liars, too. 39. In Chapter 4, June works with the Eden team on her edits. She likes her editor, Daniela. She helps June perfect the draft, making it an enjoyable experience for the reader. 43. Free. Done like Athena, June wants her audience to be entertained, not simply challenged. June's version is also more universally relatable. 45. Although June feels twinges of guilt, no one has to know the truth. 46. Meanwhile, June tries helping the Asian American community by setting up a scholarship in Athena's name. 48. Then one day, she is horrified to discover that Yale will be acquiring Athena's drafting notebooks. 49. 9. Panicked, June contacts and visits Athena's mother. She convinces Mrs. Lee not to give Yale the notebooks. Mrs. Liu seems afraid to publicize her daughter's secrets. Although tempted to accept Mrs. Liu's offer to take the notebooks, June resists. In Chapter 5, June has a video conference meeting with her publicity team, 58, because her last experience was awful. She is nervous, 58. The meeting does go well, but the team asks about June's right to write the story when she is not Chinese, 60. They ultimately agree that anyone should be able to tell any kind of story, 60. Because her debut was unsuccessful, they decide to rebrand June. The last front will be published under the name Juniper Song. Juniper is June's given name, and Song is her middle name. Though some might mistake Song for a Chinese name, June is not pretending to be Chinese. 61, 62. Daniela asks June about working with a Chinese or Chinese diaspora sensitivity reader. 63. Sensitivity readers proofread manuscripts for textual representations that might be consciously or unconsciously racist. 63. June declines. Candice Lee, the editorial assistant, pushes for the sensitivity reader. June does not back down. She is offended that Candice is questioning her work. After watching Athena go from an ordinary person to a star, June hopes the same will happen to her. She and the Eden team cultivate her social media presence and work on publicity. Hype surrounding the book grows rapidly. While watching her reputation transform online, June discovers a negative Goodreads review. Shocked to learn it is Candice's. She contacts Daniela. Daniela promises to handle the situation. In Chapter 6, the book is released. Everyone talks about the last front like they know it's going to be a hit. 79. At the Politics and Prose launch event, June tries to remain calm. The reading goes well. June is surprised by her funny, articulate, thoughtful, modest answers during the Quidia 81. However, when she sees Athena appear in the audience, she panics. Although she eventually realizes it is just a hallucination, she leaves the event as soon as possible. She Googles Athena later, but there's nothing to prove she is alive. 80. 5. In Chapter 7, the book makes the New York Times bestseller list. 86. June is thrilled. Wanting to share her success, she realizes the first person she realizes the first person she would have called is Athena, 87. Over the following weeks, the book remains a success. June attends publishing events that make her feel accomplished. When other writers ask about the last front, June is afraid they will criticize her for exploiting the story. The following January, June receives her first royalty statement, 93. She is overwhelmed by the money she is making. She finds a new apartment, pays off her loans, secures insurance, and buys new things. She also donates $2,000 to the Asian American Writers Collective and becomes a mentor for Scribbler's Fairy Godmothers, 94. Her mentee, Emmy Cho, is sweet but insecure. 
June assures her that as a queer Asian girl, she will have no problem publishing her work. I'm D6. In Chapter 8, June starts reading negative reviews online. Worried about the accusations that her work is exploitative, June contacts Marnie and Jean at Eden. They assure her not to let toxic online culture undermine her work, 99, her work, 99. However, June cannot stop poring over the online criticisms. People accuse her of glorifying Western missionaries and reinforcing racist stereotypes, 103. During a reading, June anxiously anticipates public criticisms. She defends herself during the quinja, arguing that she has the right to tell untold histories, 107. Recalling her time at the Korean War exhibit with Athena, June tells herself Athena did the same thing. She never personally experienced suffering, but wrote award-winning stories about others' suffering. 111. In Chapter 9, Susan Lee, Rockville's Chinese-American Social Club events coordinator, invites June to do a quia at one of their meetings. 113. Although she has avoided responding to such invitations, June accepts. At the event, Susan is surprised to learn that June has no Chinese heritage. Although the event ends up going well, June's conversation with an elderly Chinese-American man makes her feel stabs of guilt. 116. She feels so sick that she sprints out of the event pretending she has to collect her mother from the airport, 120. 1. In Chapter 10, June starts declining most event invitations so as not to worry about personal appearances affecting sales. 122. She is glad when the book is nominated for some rewards, creating a flurry of good press. 124. In Chapter 11, June notices a rumor spreading on Twitter while lying in bed. The account Iathanalius Ghost accuses June of stealing Athena's manuscript. Countless retweets follow. June is furious. She tries comforting herself with the fact that the user has no proof. June calls Brett about the rumor. He asks if it is true. When June denies it, he assures her that any publicity is good publicity. Brett releases a statement defending June. The Eden team says nothing, giving the trolls no attention. June tries distracting herself, but the world outside feels so insubstantial, irrelevant. 149. She can't eat and can't sleep either. 149. She tells herself other authors have emerged from scandals with their reputations. Intact. 150. June remembers when Athena said she was afraid because of attacks she received online. June had not really believed her. Now she understands. Although the Eden team reminds her Twitter is not real life, June believes it's realer than real life. June believes it's realer than real life. 153. In Chapter 13, June visits Rory and her husband Tom in Alexandria. While Rory is inside, June talks to Tom. Because he is an IT technician, she asks if he can help her trace the IIP address of a Twitter account, 166. He is hesitant. But when Rory hears what is going on, she urges him to help. That night, Rory sets up a hacker's trap via her website for Atanal Use Coast, 169. She lures the user to her site so as to trace her address. Meanwhile, new discussions about Athena emerge, calling her a race traitor, 171. Finally, the account responds to June. Tom tells her the address is from Fairfax. June immediately knows the user is Jeffrey Carlino, Athena's ex. In Chapter 14, June was living in New York when Athena and Jeff started dating. Not long after his artistic career was called into question, Athena broke up with him. She did not want to his bad press to hurt her reputation. June contacts G. They meet at a cafe the following day. 
G. Vieuf admits he is behind Athanalia's ghost. Convinced June is a liar and fraud, he wants to come to some sort of agreement. 185. June has been recording him and threatens to release his confession if he does not leave her alone. June learns that Greenhouse wants to buy her option. Everything goes back to normal. 190. June believes she is innocent and Athena's ghost has been banished. 191. In Chapter 15, not long after the online talk dissipates, June starts trending toward irrelevance. 192. Although glad the drama is over, she wants to be back in the spotlight. 193. She realizes she needs to write something new, but is unsure what. Brett urges her to come up with something to maintain her name. Although June has ideas, all she can hear is Athena's voice, 196. Remembering that she also took a smattering of papers from Athena's desk, June goes to them for direction, 197. One paragraph about a nightmare intrigues her. She uses it as the start for her new novella, Mother Witch. When Athena and June were freshmen in college, Athena stole from June. June went to a party, got drunk, and went home with someone named Andrew. In the morning, she woke up, unsure what had happened. At first, she felt accomplished for hooking up with a relative stranger. However, when flashbacks from the night returned, she realized Andrew may have raped her. Athena was the only person who realized something was wrong. June told her what happened. Not long later, however, when Athena's story came out in the literary journal, June was shocked to see that Athena had co-opted the personal details of her trauma, 205. June soon realized Athena did the same to everyone around her, 206. Although Mother Witch does not do as well as the last front, June lets herself dream about her future. In Chapter 16, blogger Adele Sparks, Sato posts a piece claiming that Mother Witch is also plagiarized, 208. She insists that the opening paragraph is taken directly from a story that Athena Lu workshop at a summer program they attended, 208. June deactivates her accounts. This time, she knows her guilt is a foregone conclusion, 211. June has a video conference with Sheer team at Eden, 213. Convinced they will fire her, June is surprised when they seem largely unconcerned. No one is suing June and the debacle is increasing sales. Brett says the debate has gained the attention of right-wingers, helping Eden financially. Athena's mother, Patricia, calls June. She tells June Adele requested access to Athena's drafting notebooks, 219. Patricia wants June's advice. June is careful with her words. She knows Patricia is terrified of what lies inside those mole skins, 221. Patricia agrees not to let Adele access them. She is also unconcerned about the allegations against June. In Chapter 17, although life feels unsettled, June is glad she has money. Meanwhile, June becomes a white supremacist Barbie, 224. She does not support this community's ideals, but appreciates that they are defending her. At times, she wonders if she should quit writing altogether. However, writing is the most important thing in her life. June tries to work on a new book idea. She starts carrying a tiny notebook with her and jotting observations and thoughts. 227. She visits Chinatown and stops at a restaurant. She silently judges the staff, telling herself to change her approach. When she engages the waiter in conversation, the owner gets upset. She is even more irate when she realizes who June is. Brett contacts June about doing IP work or writing to a specific prompt and outline, 234. Convinced it will ruin her career, June declines. In Chapter 18, 
June teaches at the Young IAPI Writers Workshop in Massachusetts for the summer, 240. The program starts well. June is exhilarated by her students. She misses being in school. However, when she catches the students reading about her online, everything changes. June attacks a girl's writing during workshop. The coordinator contacts June about being too aggressive with young writers. June quits, pretending her mother is ill. In Chapter 19, June visits her mother in Philly. She is surprised to learn that her mother is selling the house and moving to Florida. June spends the evening going through her old notebooks. They remind her that writing didn't used to be so miserable, 255. Over dinner, June's mother encourages June to give up on writing, return to school, and start a new career. She has never understood June's artistic pursuits. June feels incapable of explaining that writing is the whole world to her, 259. June begins a fictionalized version of her and Athena's story, blurring fact and fiction, 266. She is so engrossed, she is convinced this is her redemption, 168. Although the project forces her to think about Athena, it helps her dispel Athena's ghost. She falls in love with writing again, 271. Then one day, Athena's old Instagram account goes active again, 272. The user starts harassing June. Their image is one of Athena holding June's books. June contacts Juff, convinced he is behind it. In Chapter 21, June and Goeth meet. Jeff assures June he is not behind the account. He says someone is posing as Athena. He encourages June to let the whole thing go. June starts seeing him differently. Like her, he has been hurt by Athena, too. Although she wants to listen to him, she does not know who she is without Athena, 282. In Chapter 22, Athena's Instagram continues harassing June. June wonders if Athena is haunting her. She starts devouring Chinese ghost stories, 286. She tries dispelling Athena's ghost using a range of tactics, 287. None help. The user continues posting. June tells herself Athena's been dead for over two years. 290. However, she is unsure how to survive this. 290. While writing at a cafe, June sees Athena walk by. She races out, convinced the person is the Instagram user trying to torment her. She grabs the person, shocked to discover it is Diana Q. Diana assures her she is not pretending to be Athena. June realizes she is unwell. June calls her old therapist, Dr. Gailey. Because she is out of state, she promises to get June a referral. June gets another message from Athena's ghost. June gives in, agreeing to meet at the exorcist steps. In Chapter 23, June is convinced Athena is alive, 297. She and Athena had a joke about the exorcist steps. June does not see Athena, but hears her voice. She demands to know why June did what she did. Although the voice keeps changing, June confesses everything, apologizing profusely. Then Candace emerges. She used recordings of Athena's voice. This is Candice's revenge. June's actions caused her to lose her job, the two argue. June attacks Candice, trying to steal the cameras and recording devices. She almost kills Candice, but Candice gets away. In Chapter 24, June is hospitalized for four days. Candice called the police pretending to be an anonymous Good Samaritan, 312. Once June is released, she discovers the New York Times interview with Candice revealing everything. Over the following days, June descends into despair. However, a month later, when Candice sells her tell all memoir to Penguin Random House, June does not give up. 316. 
Instead, she decides to write a new version of the story, casting doubt on Candace's version. The truth is, fluid, and June can emerge the hero 317.